get awesome prints on the Ender 3 V2 using a default printer profile. My name's Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. So if you checked out my last video, you know we're playing with the Creality Ender 3 V2. Since then, I've been doing test prints so I could show you how it's printing. The catch is I'm using a default printer profile from Prusa Slicer. It's the Ender 3 default profile that comes in Prusa Slicer. All I'm changing is the temps and we're getting some awesome prints. In this video, I'm gonna show you five prints that came out great using a default printer profile. Prusa Slicer is free and they threw the Ender 3 profile in there with the last update. Now, all that being said, I did have some issues, but it is not the slicer's fault. I got some failures and it was due to clogging. And I think it was because the glitter in the PLA I was using was clogging up the nozzle. So I tried twice, uh, it failed twice, and I went on to new filament, and that's what we're gonna be using in this video. I went to the GTEC PLA Chameleon filament. It is really cool, it's kind of like a rainbow roll, they call it Chameleon. Um, and it has a really cool shine and a little bit of a sparkle to it. It printed great through the rest of the prints with the exception of one and I'll show you in a minute. So now that I've teased it, let's check out the prints individually and see how I did. If you remember in the first video, I printed this micro all-in-one test. Uh, it kind of did everything, but what I did was I used G-code from over a year ago on my original Ender 3 and I just put the same G-code in the Ender 3 V2 to see what happens. It didn't do too bad. If you remember in the first video, uh, there was a little bit of issues on the overhangs here and maybe on the points there, um, but it wasn't terrible. But it was not sliced specifically for this using that Prusa Slicer printer profile. So what I did today was I opened Prusa Slicer and all I did was change the temps and made sure the fan was on because it's PLA 100% of the time. Uh, and I got a really good print. So as you can see, the overhangs aren't bad. Up till about 60 degrees, they're great. Um, everything in the back with the bridging and the letters and the circles and the points look spot on compared to the last one. So the next thing I did was a Benchy. Now this Benchy came out great. I used the classic settings of 0.2 and 10% infill. I did not change the speeds though because I wanted to use the default Prusa Slicer speeds. But if you check out this Benchy, it is pretty great. Well, if you look at the back, it looks awesome. Um, if you look at the stack on the top, it is round, it is very nice. There's no stringing on this Benchy at all. Um, and even the steering wheel inside came out great. This is probably one of my best Benchies. If you look at the bottom of it, it also looks great there. I probably was a little too close to the bed though. So this Warlock Tower by Fate's End was the next thing I printed. And I tell you what, this thing came out pretty awesome with the exception of one problem. As you can see, I can pull it apart because somewhere in the center, something went wrong with this layer. I'm not sure what happened. It did not finish all the claws that should be around here. Uh, and the layer was just really bad and really stringy, as you can see. I pulled that layer off. I'm probably just gonna gloop this together because I don't have another shot in getting this color change um, to match the top. But the top printed really well. As you can see here, this is the top. It printed very good. Almost no stringing except for the very, very tip of the top there. Um, and all the way around, it looks great. This Warlock Tower came from the Fate's End Kickstarter in which Kimball just killed it. I'm talking killed it. And she is making some amazing towers. Um, because she did so good on the Kickstarter, these are supposed to be dice towers in the beginning, but she's making a bunch of different variations of each one. In this case, it is not a dice tower anymore. It's just a sweet decorative tower. Um, I don't use it for dice, so I really like that. But if you're into dice towers, there is a dice tower version of this as well. Check out the link in the description below for all the prints I'm showing you today, and it'll direct you where to get them. But overall, this tower came out great, even though we had some issues in the beginning. I'm a little sad that it broke, but I'll gloop it together and we'll be okay. The next thing that was printed was this machine box by Clockspring. This thing is awesome. This box does it all. It prints with no supports. It twists like this to open it and it actually pops open in a hinge and it prints all in one piece. Matter of fact, it prints face down just like this 
when it's on the bed. You pop it off the bed and everything spins and it locks into place so that door can't open. This box is great. I really love how it turned out. This was actually printed in coax metallic gunmetal silver. So it wasn't the GTEC filament from earlier, but it was printed in the coax gunmetal silver and it came out great. I love the coax filament as I've said in many videos before, but check it out. I think you'll love it. I just love these clock spring boxes. They do such an amazing job putting these things together. I believe most of them print with no supports. All of these files can be found on the Clockspring Patreon page. They are the very first person that I back on Patreon. You get all of the files, even unreleased stuff. It is awesome. He gives it to you all before the public sees it if he releases it. And I tell you what, you get some really cool stuff like this and the one we're gonna see next. So this is the last test print I did before this video and it's called a Saloon Box, also by Clockspring. I tell you what, this box came out amazing. I love the GTEC Chameleon PLA and I love how it transitioned. As you can see by the inside here, the layers were awesome. The transitions were really cool uh, on how it laid on the box. And if you look at the lid, it's really cool how they're different colors on each side. It just, it ended up really awesome. And this printer has to be dialed in pretty good to print these clock spring boxes. Um, this might be one of my favorite clock spring boxes. I saw it with Steven the Lightspeed posted a bunch of them on Twitter and that caught my eye uh, when he posted this box. So when I actually joined a couple days ago, I downloaded this box and that's why it's one of these test prints. I love that the spinning mechanism in the top locks the box, um, just like the last one. And I really love how this box came out in that GTEC Chameleon filament. Like I said, check out the links below for all the clock spring stuff. I do not have an affiliate with them. They did not pay me or they did not sponsor this video. I just love their stuff. We feature it on hot makes on Monday night all the time and uh, I had to start testing it for myself. So I didn't wanna make this a really long video. I just wanted to run through five awesome test prints that we did on the Ender 3 V2 with the default Prusa Slicer Ender 3 printer profile. Literally all we changed was the temp settings and the layer heights uh, and everything turned out great. I really love the test prints we did this time. Uh, I'm gonna keep those coming in the videos coming forward. Once again, all of the test prints and the filament I used will be in the description below, so check that out. But all this tells me is that the Ender 3 V2 is a great choice, especially for beginners, because you can grab it, you can put it together, it comes with great options, the Meanwell power supply, the 32-bit board, the tensioners, the extrusion knob, the tool tray, uh, all the good stuff it comes with. And I tell you what, it is totally worth it. Once you have it, you grab Prusa Slicer, which is free, and you use that default profile, and you're gonna get prints just like this. Now I am gonna start tweaking my profile uh, and making it better. This is the last video you're gonna see that uses the defaults because I do wanna make it better. Uh, there are some issues like with overhangs and stuff like that, um, but, up until now, I've used all defaults, and you can do that too. You can get amazing prints just like this one, and it doesn't take much. Well, I hope you guys learned something today, and as always, keep printing. What's up, everybody? I hope you liked the video. Please give me that thumbs up if you did. Hit that subscribe button, and don't forget about that little bell if you want to get notified when we go live on Monday nights for hot makes or when a new video comes out. Check out the clock spring boxes. Whoa, did you see that?